All right, now we go on Pathfinder, Heiser, Ace. Hole one at Tully Lake with a view. There's your basket. And we are back here on the vlog in Royalston, Massachusetts, not too far from Ellie and I's new place. And I have actually never documented Tully on the vlog here, but this is Marky Chap's home course. I'm pretty sure it's still his favorite course. And it's a windy one. It's always windy down here by the water. I figured it's a beautiful sunny day after a very rainy weekend at the Norbrook Fall Fling. It's time to get out and throw some discs in some nice weather. And we'll take wind over rain every day. Tully was actually one of the very first courses I ever played. I believe it was like number five or six on my course list. Went out with Jesse Cleary and his girlfriend Ashley. They took me out before I had my license and didn't get to just go and play disc golf anytime I wanted. But we're back here and I wanted to show it to everybody here on my vlog. Simon has posted a vlog here with Marky chat before, but here we are. Casey White vlog, Tully Lake. All right, hole one. I'm throwing the brand new S-Line FD3. If you haven't thrown one of these yet, you'll know. Or if you have thrown one of these, you'll know. It's nothing like the C-Line FD3s. It's much more workable, closer to a PD. Come on left. Okay, a little too straight. Potato's barking at her. Come on, flex out. All right, that was a perfect flight. Oh, here we go. Tato beans gets to go crazy dog. There he goes. Tato loves disc golf just as much as the next person. When we're at the house and we know we're about to go, we ask him and his ears go crazy and he starts to get all pizzazzy and ready to, ready to run. Ellie's choosing the Skywalker, good choice. She loves that disc. Oh, and she smoked it to the next hole. Nothing like a two off one. Switch into the mid range, and that's a much better line. Nice shot. Windy water putt to start the day. That was under committed. There it is, but nope, too much hyzer. Oh boy. All right, well, we're gonna hopefully start with a par. A bit of a wooded shot. I actually aced this back in 2018, warming up for the Tully Open. And uh, haven't, I don't think, I think that's my, still my only ace here, but Skywalker hole, perfect. 296, nice and, nice and gentle flip up. Yeah, just like that. No tree. Oh, that's gonna be a little long, but I love the line. Yep, keep it straight. So like I mentioned on hole one, Ellie and I played the Norbrook Fall Fling this weekend, and I became three-time Norbrook Fall Fling champion. And before the event, we went and played practice round on Friday before the rain came, and I knew it was gonna be chilly and rainy, so what I always do in late September, early October is break out the D-line P2s instead of the P-line because the P-line just, the grip ain't right when it's really cold. And it seems like every single year that I do that, I've been doing, I've been using these D-line P2s since 2020. Uh, it seems like every single event that I pull out the D-line P2s, the first one's always great. And then I'll putt with them all winter. And then when the season kicks back off, I'll go back to the P-line. But it's a weird thing. I love my P-line P2s and I love my D-line P2s, but when I switch to the D-line, I'm excited to get a change. And when the winter is over and I've been using the D-lines all winter, when I switch back to the P-line, I get excited to switch back to my summer putters as well. But shout out to Tommy Kratz. I got these off of him. And I've actually got a decent amount of wins with this pair now. And we're keeping them rolling. All right, redemption putt from hole one. Less wind, less water. And we threw a Skywalker. So that means that we have to get the birdie. Oh, squeaks it. I was making all my putts like that this weekend, squeaking them over the rim. All right, first birdie. Ellie snagged tap in par. And I have sap all over my Skywalker and now all over my fingers. All right, hole three, you can probably already see the basket right there. Like I told you, it's 
pretty good ace run shot. I definitely go for the sidearm hard tactic. No longer soft in the bag, hard only. But just straight at it. See if we can ring it up. Not like that. All right, Ellie going Pathfinder, Heiser, Ace, Park. Hit the pole, babe. Nice shot. I got to beat up this P2. It's not flippy enough. I lost my beat up P2 last March. And I just need to keep on hitting things with this one. I can do it. Drop, 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 drop. Ugh. So as you can see from hole one and hole three here, we're right by the lake. And Tully's kind of a wild course because sometimes in the winter, the lake will flood or they'll, they'll block up the dam. This is a dam course. And in 2018, I think it was, the whole lake froze over and basically every single basket and hole in this vicinity was up to the chains with water that turned to ice. And hole three and hole one's baskets got completely mangled, like the cage completely folded inside out like a flower. But it's just such a such an interesting thing. Natural causes just kind of derail a course, but it's always good to see it back up and up and running again. Ellie doesn't have much of a putt because she's literally leaning on the pole. You can probably see her disc right there. But. Well, that's par. That's really embarrassing. Nice, good putt. Thanks. The crowd goes wild. All right, we're gonna give the P2 a birdie chance here. This is. The ace run right over the top of the basket, but we'll take the extra putting reps. Come on, baby. Oh, buddy. You gotta love it. Oh, no. Don't got the hyzer, but this is a P-Line P2 I got from Caleb Bruce. And the thing is so beat up, and when I got it from him, I thought it was gonna be flippy right away. But no matter how beat up it is, you can probably see it in the video. It just like, the old one that I had, I used to putt with it, and it was the uh, opposite of the pair, the one that got stabbed in Lake Tahoe, so I couldn't use the other stabbed one. So I started throwing the other one as my throwing putter, and I must have just putted with it so much that it was just so beat up and it had a huge chunk out of it, and that's what made it so flippy, but I want this thing to be like that vertical, vertical hyzer, and then like at like 200, 250, it just like, dives right but like i said i just got to keep throwing it ellie's showing up for hunts mean who won that tournament Me. you did there's nobody else in my division hey no that's <laughs> fine hey ellie plays fa2 typically fa2 fa3 and hunts is just such a special quirky course and she's a good sidearm player that she would have got third place in fpo and <laughs> it was pretty awesome baskets just tucked on the right we're trying to get like right down that channel and she pured it. No trees, please. Ah, oh, the one on the corner. That's the one tree to miss. Okay, I'm gonna throw that P2 I was talking about. Beat it up. Keep it lower. No, I see the basket, I see the chains, I see an ace in my brain. Too high. Get down. All right, on the dance floor. We had a great weekend down in Northwestern Connecticut. Norbrook is the number one rated course in Connecticut, my favorite course in Connecticut, designed by none other than a worm, one of the original designers of Maple Hill. And I just give him so much credit. Every single course I've played that he's designed is just so fair and fun and all around gorgeous. And Norbrook is no exception. And that's why I keep returning. It helps that I keep winning, but I actually shot Course record, once again, I tied my own course record that I set in 2021, which in 2021, I shot the highest rate around in my career, 1076 at 13 down. But this time around, it was raining and I shot 13 down with eight birdies in a row to finish my round. And that came out unofficial at 1078. So whether or not that'll hang on, I'm not sure, but we will see with time once the ratings update comes out in like two weeks. But Ellie won FA3 dominated by the way we've talked about it 
she uh, she had a bit of a cold leading up to it, so we were talking about her playing FA2, but she just wanted to stick it out in FA3, and she would have tied first in FA2. So we know that for the future now. FA2 is for her. She's getting good quick, and I'm just glad that we were able to bring two trophies home and have a great weekend with our friends Aaron and Jenna, Big Dog Kyle, Emily, Annie, and Nate, and Lawrence, and uh, played some Uno, played some Skippo, Played some Jackbox TV, some Quiplash. That's always good, but really, really awesome weekend with a bunch of friends. The rain did not hold us back, and it was just exactly what I could have hoped for after a tough stretch tournaments with D Glow, or what? Let's start Ledgestone, Idlewild, D Glow, Worlds, MVP. It was nice to just have kind of a homey weekend down in Connecticut. Currently one down, and on Tully, you gotta get birdies. Oh yeah, just no fear. That's what we like. Yeah, see, that's the pop we're looking for. Maybe it was the rain that just kind of spooked me because the first round on Saturday, it was like misting. It wasn't really raining, but I was just barely, like I said, sneaking them over the rim. Aaron LeBlanc took a bunch of videos of me and he said he's got like four videos of my putts just doing that one hop off the cage and in. But I guess it's just a little bit of like uh, timid putting, as I would say where Sunday it was really windy and timid putting just wasn't gonna cut it. And that's why I only shot five down instead of 13. But of course I had enough cushion to get the win, but I just need to keep that, keep that pop. But it is, it is a little shaky thing switching between putters because some putters will be a little straighter and other putters will have a little more fade. So whether I aim at the pole or aim at the right hand chains, these D lines, I should just be aiming at the pole my brain just instinctually kind of puts it out to the right, but it's all about adjustment. All right, hole five. I would argue probably the easiest hole in the course. Basket's just around the corner here with these trees. And uh, like I said on hole three, I got hard tactic in the bag. I've had soft in the bag for years, but this hard tactic can handle so much more torque and I don't seem to miss my angles as much as I used to with the soft. And I just like the flip up to flat and, and hold the glide kind of flight, but this one's gonna just be like a soft Annie. Okay, that's how we do it. Oh, okay, we slid it pretty long. Come on, Pathfinder, Heiser. Oh, dang. All right, shout out Kyle Klein. Cosmic Fury, I wasn't really sure about it. And Kyle had me throw one and it flew freaking amazing. So Cosmic Fury is officially, unofficially in the bag for now. Oh, did I hit your tree? No, I didn't. I just threw it all the way to the next tee pad. That's a happy dog right there. There you go. Oh, good bid. Birdie putt for two in a row. Thought I put it too long and I got this hyzer around the tree, but that doesn't mean we can't make it. Oh yeah. Oh, it feels good. Putter hyzer up the hill. If you can see the uh, the kind of trio tree quad tree baskets just to the right of that short short right. I'm going P3X. Oh, that's too far. Oh, maybe not. All right. Well, it wasn't a very good ace run. If anybody out there has a Skywalker that's too overstable for them, if you find one in the one sixties, Ellie's been loving hers. And hopefully just a nice easy tap in. Yeah. These are some old, old disc catchers. But they catch just fine to me. Hole seven, I got myself a little turkey going. So I'm four down now. And uh, we're gonna go with my flippy P2. Hopefully just straight at it, kind of like hole three. It's got a drop though. I'm throwing it too high. Ooh, dead straight. Need some love. Well, if you guys know me well, you might know that throwing putters for touch is one of the most 
hot and cold parts of my game. Some days is my favorite thing to do, but then I'll go to a tournament and when it actually matters, I'll completely derail around because I thought that throwing a putter backhand was a good choice. Well, unfortunately, that saga all started here, right on hole seven at Tully. Because before I knew how to control drivers, whether it was fairway driver, distance driver, anything, I had a lot of friends that just threw judges. So I had this fluid judge that I used to throw on like every single hole, no matter what the distance. If I had any doubt in my mind of what I was capable of doing and I was like scared of missing my line, I would just throw that fluid judge. And literally the weekend before I went to the Junior World Championships, I threw that judge as a funsy on this hole and it went somewhere down in these woods and I didn't even look for it. I completely forgot about it. And that was July, 2017. And ever since I lost that judge, I haven't been in touch with a throwing putter. I'm obviously getting better at it now. I'm playing more disc golf than ever before. But that judge was like a curse for me because Casey White and backhand throwing putters immediately became like awful. But we're slowly climbing back been six years and I feel like I am I'm making my way over the hump. Ellie for bird. Ooh, just over the top. Minnesota slide. And P2 putt for birdie. Oi uh, too high. Back back foot slipped. And now I'm wimped. Basically any single time my backhand gets that, it's either I never get enough momentum, like when I play in snow, if I don't pack down my back foot and my back foot slips, I'll never get enough on it. But if I get a lot on it, nice, nice putt, babe. If I get a lot on it, but then it like just misfires, I'll always go to the sky with it, which it's whatever. All right, well, this is hole eight, except this is a rec tee because the regular tee pad is just I don't know, kind of a dumpy shot. We're just gonna chuck one out there. If you can see the back wall, this the, the dam wall, the basket's kind of just short and left of where we can see. But I basically just throw a cloud breaker, big anti-flex. There it is. That's exactly what you want. Keep the height. Yeah. That's out there, definitely out there. Guadalupe up and around the corner. The, uh, the layout here at Tully has recently had to change, unfortunately. Typically after hole eight here, we would go up the hill to the left and play what used to be hole nine, which was honestly a pretty sick shot. You had like the big dam ravine on the right side. Some people could take the big hyzer over the, over the ravine or it was like a FD hyzer flip turnover. But unfortunately, when we went up there, we had to cross the bridge over the dam. And even though there's a sidewalk, the course, whatever you want to call it, the Army Corps of Engineers who run the course thought that it was unsafe for disc golfers to be crossing the bridge, even on the sidewalk. So after this hole, we actually go to what used to be hole 15. And the holes kind of got mixed up out of order nowadays, but it's what it is. Better than the course not existing at all. But I'm, I definitely miss old hole nine. Get up there. Nice. Nice putt, babe. That's par for Ellie. I'm putting for two from the rec tee. So it's not necessarily an eagle putt because I, to be honest, have no business putting from the rec tee or throwing from the rec tee, but it's still a good two if I can hit it. No. Nope. All right, this is a quick shout out to, especially my touring friends when they come out to Massachusetts and they say, oh, blank course? No, that place sucks, it beats up my discs. Well, here in Massachusetts, every course beats up your discs. And this is what it looks like to play a damn course right here. Literally a pebble stuck in the rim of my cloud breaker along with a nice gash, which I don't know if I hit the wall, and if I did, that was a really good bomb, but 
It's just the life we live out here in the Northeast. All right, like I said, old 15, this is now considered hole nine, but I still call it 15, as well as the, all the other holes that changed. But another cloud breaker rip. We're basically throwing down this channel as far as we can and then hyzering into the woods. Or pull it wide, but that's still gonna work. Maybe. As long as you don't go past the gap and then you have to fight in, that should be fine. Skywalker promo right here. New Dismania commercial. Yeah. Well, that's not really be yes, ma'am. That's a great shot. Yeah, that'll be good on the edge. And this is just pretty good birdie to hit if I can do it. No, off the tree maybe. Oh, almost. Should have done the Annie. I like the Annie lineup better. Ah, uh, no. Oh. Oh, the tap in pars. And that is through nine. I think I am four under. I'm not really sure, I'd have to add it up. But I'm just counting hole eight as a par three. Wouldn't really make sense for me to call that a par four, unless I play it from the long tee. Gentle P2 hyzer, but you gotta test the ceiling, but basket's kind of straight through the trees here on the left. Turnover sidearm's a decent play as well. Why? Well, at least I'm beating it up. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, he torqued it. Miss that tree. Skip. Nice shot, babe. I'm gonna try and go D line MD for the people because they want to see the sauce. And if you know anything about a D line MD sidearm, it's the, the, the mayor of the sauce. Mayor of Sauce Town. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we like. That's tapping, baby. I've given myself quite the tricky look here. I guess I gotta go hyzer through the trees here. I don't think the Annie could reach because it's a tailwind. But we'll see if I can make it. Too wide. There it is. Yeah, buddy. Player two. Dang. People might like to talk crap about themselves with, oh, I'm always better on my second putt. Well, the second putt is a learning opportunity because if you always make your second putt, you are introducing yourself to what you're capable of. What a putt. By the beautiful girl. Look at her. I needed that real bad. With her brand new bag too. Oh yeah. She loves it. Swapped. That's okay. This is the new hole that replaced hole nine essentially because hole nine used to play that way to 10. But now this is 11. So the bass is kind of straight through that field goal but it's like a nice little tactic. Tactic ace flick. And it is Ellie's box. Oh, you got right. a birdie. You're right. All right, well you hold it on. Sorry. Got the Pathfinder sidearm on lock. Hard tactic for the ace. One and done. You're seeing it here first. Hopefully I'm not blocking the camera. I don't think I am. No, that's a tree. Well, so much for that. Just to see how flippy this thing is getting. Hopefully it's more flippy than when we started the round. Oh yeah, gotta get down though. Oh, right, oh, right over the top, right into the tree behind it. All right, I think that P2 might finally be getting to the sweet spot. This is what I left myself with because I was so worried about acing, I forgot to hit the gap. But we'll go one Annie, one Heiser. Annie first. Oh yeah, let's just take a par, huh? Yeah. All right, Heiser putt. I knew I was gonna do that. Well, you can't win them all. Yuck. Oh, chain out. Could have had two birdies in a row and I, when I had two pars.
player two. Ah. Uh, no. Good kick. Ah, oh, second kick. Her player pack disc from Norbrook. Yep. Okay. Workable though. I'm gonna throw my Midnight Prowl on an aggressive flip up backhand. And then I'm gonna try the Jesse Clary special, which is distance driver sidearm turnover. Because he threw the best drive I've ever seen on the solo with a freaking D3 flick. But Midnight Prowl first. This is biting off a lot. Oh, well, not when you throw it like that. That is the worst pitch up ever. Regular cloud breaker. You gotta push it right at that birch and just kinda get that nose down going down the hill. No, that's nose down, but that's a lost disc. That's it right there. That should be money. All right, well, I'm cheating. Since my midnight prowl didn't land in the middle, I just wanted to throw, wanted to throw the shot the way that it should be filmed which is right down the pipe here. And I'm gonna throw my Cosmic Fury because of what we said before where Kyle basically told me to just rip it like an MD1 and I loved it. So let's see if I can do that right now, but I'm gonna scooch it. Please don't suck, please don't suck. Power grip. Yep. I mean, all the way down there. Yeah, I could have put some more height on it and played a little more aggressive because the basket's just tucked to the left, but satisfied with that flight. So like I was talking about on hole seven, the way that my putter backhand has just dissolved since 2017, that I would really like to not only get back into throwing putters comfortably, which right now I am almost there with the fan grip but what i used to do with that judge was i used to power grip it but just like you know form changes and just evolving your game as a whole you never know like i don't know why things don't work anymore but sometimes they just don't work anymore and you kind of move on as a player and power grip putter backhands is one of those things but that cosmic fury it's giving me hope that is just no commitment. That is it. Ah, oh, well, at least I missed high. It's okay, I cheated on that hole anyway. Old 11, uh, that means this is what, 13 now? Baskets tucked left in the woods. You basically aim at the tree with the blue paint on it and hope you miss it. But perfect Skywalker hole, 330. There's the bucket, here's my disc, and all I see is chains. Too straight, right in the tree. Dang it, I was aiming for that one too. Trusty Guadalupe, no trees, please. Ew, money. Better than my shot. All right, C-line FD1 to compare to the Skywalker. If I aim at the same tree, there's no way it straightens out. Well, I threw it more inside and that's an ace. Oh, just shy. I'm glad the Skywalker flies differently than the C-Line FD1. That way there's not overlap because I like the overstability of the C-Line FD1 being a little bit more uh, controllable version of an FD3, slower, less distance. But the Skywalker just gets that flip up to ride perfectly. I know I just threw it straight into a tree, but I forgot to give a shout out to Devin, who I saw up at Smug's World, who put this amazing Anakin Skywalker die on this beautiful black and white. Horizon FD1. And uh, the red stamp, I've been choosing more of like a Darth Vader vibe. So maybe this is like a, kind of like a transitional uh, imagery of it's a, it's a red stamp. So it's like the die is Anakin Skywalker, but the stamp is Darth Vader, you know, that little bit of overlap. And maybe I'll have to do the same with some other, because I have three black rim Skywalkers. 
The red stamp is Darth Vader. The blue stamp is Anakin Skywalker. The green stamp is Luke Skywalker. I feel like that's just the easiest way to put it and the coolest way to put it because what else would you do with a disc called the Skywalker other than give it Star Wars names. Old hole 12, technically hole 14 now. It's a weird part four. You kind of want to go, wow, that sounded like a big throw in on 10. Twelve. Twelve, yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. All right. Um, we have not showcased this disc yet, so I'm going to. Typically, my tournament play here is actually turnover sidearm, but I'm going to show you what the Zeta Moon is all about. So, S line CD1, a little bit more understable right away, but that means it's just a hyzer flip dream right away. So I'm going to give it a rip. Basically, a vertical, vertical hyzer. Oh well, I yanked it, but it straightened out immediately. Unfortunately, into a tree. <laughs> yeah, that's it right there. Uh, too much flex. But I liked my commitment, at least. Oh, maybe not lower. Not lower. <laughs> maybe not lower. Well, middle of the fairway. Okay, you know, the shot <laughs> that would work perfectly mm. for that turnover sidearm. Probably be the new DD. I don't have one in the bag right now. I just didn't bring one for the round. But I have been messing around with it, and I have to say... If you love the DD-1, but maybe when it's brand new, you're like, oh, I can't wait to beat this in, the DD is probably going to be your best friend right away. And that's just kind of something that's unheard of in the Dismania Originals lineup is a disc that is able to bomb before you even hit a single tree with it. And I just think that all of the fans of Dismania are going to love it, and it's going to be a home run. And if you haven't tried one yet and maybe you love the Enigma or the Paradigm or the Essence or the DD-1, or maybe you don't throw any of those because they're too overstable, the DD is gonna be your friend. All right, here's where Zeta's Moon ended up. We're gonna go MD-5 sidearm. Too much flex. Yeah, too much flex. All right, hole 14, well, whatever it is now, 16. Uh, used to be like a crazy driver flex, but now it's kind of a shortened hole. I'm going Midnight Prowl. Just got to fight him. I did not fight for a second. Yep, good rip. Stay clean. Nice. So something that's been cooking up for about almost a year now is the epic doubles match with Marky and I, Team Saw Dude, and Aaron the Blank and Kyle Bergman, big dog Kyle. Um, they were talking some smack and Marky didn't like it, saying that they could beat us at Tully. So Marky started to ask him if they wanted to put some money on it. And I'm saying, we started talking about this, I think last November or December. And now that I'm home for the off season, I feel like it's only a matter of time before we actually make it happen. But I'll have to bring it back up to them, see if they're still keeping to it and ready to put some money down on it but we talked about like you know hundred dollar match and uh i'll be excited to see if we can actually get that going i think i can squeak one through there i'm gonna try the ante first and then see if i can make it through that gap on the second try oh tinked metal too low, okay. yeah too low all right now we're going for this this crazy gap right here got it Ah! Good effort. Man, to hit that gap and to not go in, that's just not fair. All right, 17. The holes are finally back in order. And what we have here is a little dumpy over the hill shot. Tournament play for me is this little tactic sidearm, but I'm gonna try backhand as well. But basically you just gotta chuck it and listen for chains. Or listen for tree. All right, let's try the backhand. Such a weird hole. Too far. But that's probably a better shot. All right. That's great. For birdie! Ah. Oh. Get in there. Ah. Oh. My P2. Straddle around the tree. Oh, yeah. 
Full 18 really isn't much to film, so I think I'm just gonna end it right here. But that was Tully Lake on the vlog, and I hope you guys got to see what it's all about. I wish it was still the same course it was when I first played it back in 2015 when I was just a kid, but still here, and now Ellie and I live closer. So it's probably gonna be a course I come to play more often, just cause it's more justifiable and Marky lives right up the road. So it'll be definitely easy for him to convince me to come play here now when it used to always be the only course we had in between us was Cogs, but now we got the courses around like Tully, Flat Rock, uh, I mean, Meadowbrook is obviously still just only a short drive away, but that's gonna do it for today's vlog. Here's hole 18, the basket's way over to the right, but I don't know. I don't really like to film blind holes, especially when it's just a sea of trees, but thank you to Ellie for joining. And Tato Beans, Tato. Tato, I say hi to the vlog. Yep, there he is. Thanks, Tate, for coming. And uh, yeah, this weekend we got Nantucket, so wish us luck. And I'm hoping I can take down another B-tier win. And that would be great because I've only got one so far this year. But that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Once again, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.